this is for uh, Quality NDE up in uh, Montreal. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, this is Henry Cook over at NDT Systems. Uh, what I'm going to be showing is the Bondoscope 300, the new bond tester that we have uh, been delivering on the parts that um, you sent us overnight. I've got two parts here. One looks like an aerospace structure, looks like a leading edge of, uh, of a wing. And I have two areas that uh, have end, uh, have areas that I'm assuming those are the places that have the uh, unbonded areas in them. So what I'm going to do basically is show you uh, using the Bond Scope 300 in the pitch catch mode with our low frequency uh, probe. You notice. Uh, it's a probe that has two spring-loaded pitch send receive uh, ends on them that we'll be placing on the part. The other thing that you see on the screen is that uh, we have our sweep mode going so that you can, as we're moving along, you can see the changes. Uh, I may have to speak up some more when I put the probe on it because the low frequency in this mode uh, rings pretty good on this part, as you'll see. So. I'll go ahead and put it on, and you hear it, and we've got a, a baseline signal from the part, uh, as you can see, and as we move to the sample, you can see that we're getting a re response from the sample, if I move back and forth, and back and forth, we can see that response. We can also see that we get fairly close to the edge. So we're probably less than a quarter of an inch away from the edge, the probes as we're going across. And as we move around, you can see that we're moving around. That was a setup that I put in uh, for that. We have a slightly different setup I use for the second defect. So I'm going to go over to my setup mode and call the next setup. Go here and go back to this one, two, three. Okay, here we go. Go back into our mode. Move this here a little bit more. One of the things I notice on this is that um, for this application, we'll probably want to move the spacing in a little bit tighter and also maybe even uh, non spring loaded. So. just a little bit. Make sure that we can see that. Yeah, yeah I'm catching the edges. So that's why I, I was saying that well, tighter probe spacing would help this a little bit. We also, on the third part that you sent us, we've got another setup.
fairly quick and easy response from that. Um, look at some other parts that we kind of use with this thing sometimes. This is a, uh, basically it's a honeycomb core paper with impact damage. Go back to our standard setup. It kind of works better that way. So I'm going to go back. Our default settings. Help if I put the part in view. You can see the part. I don't know if you can see there's a disc bond here. Real easy to use. Um, we're looking at either amplitude or phase or a combination of both. The two samples that you sent me, uh, we got the best response from amplitude. This standard here that I just showed you, a uh, sample I, uh, its best response was uh, coming from phase. So I set the sweep to show phase. Uh, on yours, I showed it to uh, show amplitude. The alarm was set for the response for the phase. On this one, on yours was the uh, amplitude but it didn't take very long um, again uh, looking at a good area bad area you kind of set the frequency and the gate and the alarm level and any gain and, and if you're looking at um, amplitude set the uh, gain for the alarm threshold and you're ready to go so if you have any questions um, uh, feel free to get a hold of myself or Greg, and um, we'll go from there. Uh, we'll be sending the samples back. I'm not sure um, if we're sending a part uh, the the instrument back to you or not. Uh, I'm not working on that aspect of it. I guess you're talking with uh, Kim uh, and or Greg on that. So we'll go from there. Thanks. Talk to you guys later.